Nowadays, if you search housing market on YouTube, you come across many videos that say the housing market is going to crash in 2024. So, if these people know that the housing market is going to crash, then can you actually short the housing market and make millions? In the 2008 housing crash, when Michael Burry figured out the housing market was going to crash, he shorted the housing market and made a fortune. Can you still use this exact method Michael Burry used in 2008? Let's explore this, but before we go further, let me remind you that this video is only for entertainment purpose and is not financial advice. So, before 2008, Michael Burry knew that the housing market was going to collapse as he figured out mortgage bonds were backed by really bad loans. At that time, Michael Burry went to various investment banks, bought credit default swaps, and made a bet against the housing market. Eventually, the housing market crashed and Michael Burry made millions of dollars. By the way, if you don't know what credit default swaps are, we have already explained them in this video. Check out this video on the channel. Now, in 2024, can you replicate Michael Burry's exact strategy? Unfortunately, directly replicating Michael Burry's strategy of using credit default swaps to short the housing market in 2024 is not possible. In 2024, credit default swaps are not the same anymore. After the 2008 crisis, in 2010, regulators introduced the new regulations known as the Dodd-Frank Act. The Dodd-Frank Act significantly restricted access to credit default swaps for retail investors. Most CDS trades now go through central clearinghouses with high minimum investment requirements. Before 2008, credit default swaps were primarily traded in the over-the-counter market in a less regulated environment with limited transparency. It means they were privately negotiated contracts between buyer and seller directly, outside of a centralized exchange. Because of this, these credit default swaps lacked standardization, and the terms of each contract varied significantly, making it difficult to compare and price them accurately. Since credit default swap trading wasn't conducted on a centralized exchange, there was a limited transparency in terms of pricing and trading activity. This made it difficult for regulators and investors to monitor the market effectively. Both parties in a CDS contract faced counterparty risk meaning the risk of the other party defaulting on their obligations. We know that numerous banks, like Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, have faced varying degrees of counterparty risk during the 2008 crisis. At that time, the capital requirement to participate in the swap market was very low. This allowed for excessive leverage and increased risk. Lower capital requirements allowed institutions to borrow more money and take on more leverage to participate in the swaps market. This increased potential risk in the system, as even small losses were magnified by high leverage. As the swap market was interconnected with each and every bank, the high level of leverage contributed to a domino effect. Because defaults by one institution triggered losses for others, it quickly escalated the crisis. Back then, credit default swaps were very accessible for retail investors. Retail investors, with smaller investment pools, had easier access to CDS through their brokerage firms, potentially allowing them to participate in shorting the housing market. The limited scrutiny and the lack of regulations allowed for potentially risky short-selling activities to occur under the radar. As the market was unregulated, the potential returns for successful market bets through CDS could be significant and offer much higher potential returns. But all of this changed after the 2008 crisis. This Dodd-Frank Act introduced a push-out provision requiring most swap trades to be cleared through central clearinghouses. This increased transparency, reduced counterparty risk, and facilitated better oversight. This act increased the capital requirements for buying swaps. Financial institutions now require more capital to participate in the swaps market. This reduced excessive leverage and risk in the system. They also increased reporting requirements to provide regulators with better insights into CDS activity, allowing for closer monitoring. They also restricted access for retail investors. As the capital requirement to invest in CDS has increased, it has effectively shut out most retail investors from the CDS market. Regulators now highly scrutinize short-selling activities. Any large-scale short positions in the housing market are more likely to attract attention from regulators. Increased regulation and a focus on managing genuine risk have reduced the potential returns for speculative CDS transactions compared to 2008. Overall, the regulatory changes made after the 2008 crisis have made it difficult to short the housing market. 
Now, even if you somehow manage to make a bet against the housing markets, you will not make huge amounts of money this time. The reason is the market conditions. The 2008 financial crisis was fueled by a bubble inflated by subprime mortgages. The housing market today has completely different dynamics, making shorting less effective. Before 2008, everybody thought that the housing market always remained stable and never fell. So, banks and institutions thought that they were making free money while selling those credit default swaps and collecting premiums on them. Since 2008, it has been proven that the housing market can fall. The banks and regulators are more familiar with the risks in the housing market. Also, any potential crash has a shock value. Before 2008, people thought the housing market was stable, so they were bullish on housing and invested a lot of money. Now that people have seen the housing collapse, its shock value of the housing market crash is gone, and many people will anticipate it much before anything happens. Also, banks are much more aware of the housing market now, and no bank would sell you credit default swaps. Or even if they agree to sell, it is less likely that you will have much leverage with those swaps. So overall, you cannot short the housing market in 2024 exactly like Michael Burry did in 2008. However, you can use alternative strategies for hedging against a potential downturn in the housing market. You can short housing ETFs or invest in inverse mortgage REITs. These strategies come with their own risks and require careful analysis by a qualified financial advisor. Instead of shorting the housing market, a better strategy would be to buy a house in the next housing crash. When the housing market recovered after the 2008 crisis, many people regretted that they didn't buy a house during the 2008 crash. Real estate properties were much cheaper during the 2008 crash, and now, in the current scenario where the interest rates are high, supply and development of new houses are less, so the total cost of real estate properties is in the millions. So, instead of shorting the housing market during the next housing crash, a better strategy would be to buy a piece of real estate. To buy a house, you need to do research, which is very time-consuming. To save time, you can use tools like DealCheck.io. It is a fantastic real estate analysis website. Whether you want to buy, rent, or flip a property, it will give you all the potential future price rise or rental income cash flow with just a few clicks. This will not only save you time, but it will also prepare you for the future. So check out the link in the description and find the real estate property you want to buy during the next housing crash.